What is going on everybody and welcome to a video on GitHub Copilot. So there's been a lot of hype and uh, dangers expressed with Copilot and it's been hard for me because I haven't had access until a few weeks ago. So I finally have had some time to play around with Copilot and I thought I would share my thoughts with you all. So if you're been living under a rock and you don't know what Copilot is, it's just an in-editor extension that makes suggestions to you as you code. Basically, it tries to finish your lines or even suggest entire blocks of code. So it's an interesting concept, and obviously this spawns all kinds of issues, especially because it was trained off of GitHub data. Um, and so there's like privacy concerns, security concerns, and then people are worried that their jobs are going to be taken away. <laughs> so, so first off, how does it work? Uh, does it work well? And then what about all these other little issues with something like this. First off, Copilot was created using OpenAI's Codex model, which is a variant of GPT-3, but Codex differs in three what I would call major ways. To illustrate things here, we're actually going to use Copilot. So first off, it's smaller. GPT-3 is 175 billion parameters, whereas Codex is 12 billion parameters. This smaller model makes it a bit quicker to run, or at least easier to run quickly, as well as makes it easier to scale out. And here you can see just how quickly we made a bar chart with Copilot to compare these two sizes. Each time that you see this gray text, that's the suggestion from Copilot, and I just hit tab to accept them. Interestingly, it even gave it a title and labels. The Y label is not quite accurate. We would want to change that, but it would be very easy for us to just edit that in and still be way quicker than if I tried to code this all by hand myself. So GPT-3 is indeed far larger and can arguably do a lot more, but it also has a knowledge base of basically everything. GPT-3 is general purpose. It includes concepts of coding, but also law, medicine, conversation, and a whole lot more. Codex is only concerned with coding, so it's a much smaller piece of the total pie, and a much smaller model can actually be better at coding than full-scale GPT-3. There are also a lot of really little subtle things that you wouldn't expect Copilot to do, but it does. So in case you missed it, as we adjust these percentages, the suggested percentage that comes next is mathematically accurate as a subtraction from a total of 100%. So not only does it have to understand that you would max out at 100%, it's doing the math, which is really cool. The final way that Codex differs from GPT-3 is Codex and Copilot have a giant context length of understanding. Essentially, it's a question of how large can your file be before Codex can't ingest everything in your file, so some of the earlier and further away code might be ignored when generating suggestions. The context size of GPT-3 is 4 kilobytes, whereas the context size of Codex or GitHub's Copilot is 14 kilobytes. So then the next question you probably have is, okay, well, how much code is 14 kilobytes? Well, I've got a directory with a bunch of Python files from GitHub repositories, so let's just see if we can find one that's about 14 kilobytes. And using GitHub Copilot, we did find a file, and we see that 14 kilobytes is about 400 lines or so, which is considerably large. Obviously, sometimes your files will be bigger, and it's not like Copilot just won't work. It's just that it won't be able to take your entire file into context. Next, let's cover an example of some regular expressions. So say we've got a sentence, and we want the regular expression to find the price of something in there. We'll let Copilot write a regular expression as well as print it out for us. But before we run this, let me show you something really cool. What if we write a comment that begins to say what the output will be or should be, but we let Copilot finish the comment? It turns out that Copilot knows exactly what the output will be here. This is my own made-up example. It exists nowhere, certainly not in the data set it was trained on. This is an example of transformers and their understanding that I've used in the past, but usually transformers aren't too accurate here. I can only sometimes get it to get this right. Copilot gets this right every time. I couldn't trip it up. I'm sure it's possible to trip it up, but asking Copilot to tell me the expected output, at least for me, has just plain worked. And this signals a deeper understanding than just simply pattern matching. Notice too that it gets the format right. It's going to come in the form of a list. We can change our requested regex to include the dollar sign too. And again, we can ask Copilot to tell us what's the output going to be now. It's correct. What if we add another dollar amount here? Again, the same thing. Copilot not only wrote our regex, it actually knows what the output of the regex will be. 
Now we could keep going here, and this doesn't necessarily have any super important direct use to us, but I hope it drives home that there's more going on here than just simply pattern matching and sort of regurgitating things it's seen before. There's a deeper understanding. This doesn't necessarily have any direct use to us, but it's really cool. Let's do something even more absurd. I'm going to import a non-existent package called sentiment analysis. I'll create an example sentence, and we can keep the suggested string to for now. Later, we'll try something else. Next, I will pretend this made-up module, again, has a made-up method. I'm literally just making all of this up right now. <laughs> anyway, we're going to say that method is called analyze. Now, rather than running, let's just do the same thing. Let Copilot predict the output. And yeah, that's insane. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and try our own sentence next, not one that Copilot came up with uh, for us. This time, negative 1.0, that makes sense. Uh, much of the time, I think you're going to get returned something between a negative 1 and a positive 1. But you might also get a string positive or a string of negative, something like that. Trying a few more examples, you can see it gets it right every single time. And again, there is no sentiment analysis module here. There might be a module called sentiment analysis, but what's important is it doesn't exist, and I don't think it has an analyze method. <laughs> but it's just copilot, and this is so crazy. And I really want to stress, these were all unplanned examples. I just tried them, and they worked. Same thing with the regular expressions examples. I'm, I'm really not cherry picking here, even though the performance looks like I'm cherry picking. Copilot is simply that good, and it really is staggering to me. And if you have Copilot, I really encourage you to try like more um, kind of out there examples like this, because it's, it's actually really surprising what Copilot can, uh, can actually do. So now for some of the problems people have brought up, the first one being it's going to steal our jobs. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't think that's true. I, I think eventually you might have an AI that a normal person could dictate their wants and needs to, and the AI could plausibly code that. But at the end of the day, it's just like programming languages are, are just that. They're languages. It's our way of explaining to a machine what we want. So I'm not really sure that having an AI that you can explain what you want uh, and it produces it is that far off of programming. The leap, the difference of using something like Copilot, it's almost like an extra layer of abstraction. Not all that different from using Python over using something like C++. And a perfect example of this and what I would argue is a productivity boost, which is Python, I think the same thing is going to be true with stuff like GitHub Copilot where you're able to be far more productive. And when you're more productive, there's more of a reason for someone to hire you. So it's not really the case that we'll have less job openings. If anything, it would be more job openings. Even if you do remedial stuff as a programmer, this will make you more productive, more valuable. So I'm, I'm not, I'm just not sure I'm buying that it's going to steal anybody's jobs. But you also kind of need to have some sort of contextual understanding, at least under the current version of Copilot. It, again, it's, it's totally possible in the future that you won't. And it, anyone could just dictate to, to something like Copilot, hey, make XYZ for me. But I think you're still going to need people that will still architect overarching things. Um, it's possible that an AI could do that, but I, at least to me, I see this as really more of a layer of abstraction and a productivity boost, which most likely would just create more jobs. More people could afford to hire you because you're far more productive. So I don't know. I, I, that's at least the way that I see it. I know people will disagree uh, with, with that take, but that's, that's kind of how I'm seeing it. Um, also, I've seen, at least for me personally, like Copilot has taught me things. I've thought about libraries that I haven't had the chance to really look into using, and I just kind of started writing code and said, hey, I want to do this thing with that library. And it just kind of guided me along the way to teach me how to use that library, and I found that to be really, really cool. There were also times where I wanted to see if Copilot could do something that I was familiar with, and then it ended up doing it in a different way that I had never really thought about or even using a method that I didn't even know existed. <laughs> so, so it's taught me stuff, and I, and I also think that's, that's really cool. 
So I also think that Copilot does make mistakes, right? It's got logical errors that it makes. It makes um, errors in what it thinks you're going after, but you're not really. There's a skill involved in how to prompt a Copilot to give you what you want. Uh, so not all that unlike using a search engine, for example. So um, I think that overall, I was personally very, very impressed with with what Copilot could do for me. Uh, I kind of came into this expecting to not like it. I tend to like very simple editors. I don't like autocomplete stuff. Um, so for me, I was almost biased to not like Copilot, but I, I, I really enjoy it. I think it's a, it's a really cool innovation. Um, both in terms of how they've applied a transformer model and built it into an editor, how fast it is, is a 12 billion parameter model, and it inferences very quickly, uh, especially given the context size. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's a really well integrated thing in the technology and the actual accuracy of what it's actually producing. I find it to be far more useful than not. Like I said, it does sometimes produce silly things. But for the most part, it is very helpful, very quick. And again, I, I tend to find it most useful in the more remedial task type stuff that I need to do while I'm programming. And again, I think that's great. It, it just all it's done is make me more productive. So anyway, um, at least for now, I, I really do like it. Uh, I hope that uh, the future is not dystopic and that we aren't all replaced by something like Copilot. But it's not really how I see it going. In closing, I'll share a particularly cool example that I stumbled on by just simply poking around with GitHub Copilot, and it is Conway's Game of Life, and then visualizing it with Pygame. This particular example worked on the first try, and this is the order that I went through to actually produce it, but I have tried other larger projects and more complicated stuff like this to be done completely by Copilot, and it, it really didn't work. So, of everything I've shown here, this is the most cherry-picked example but uh, still really cool to see. Anyway, that's all for now. I honestly can't wait to see what the future holds with this kind of technology. Let me know what you think down below, and with that, I'll see you all in another video.